Aloha everyone. On May 27th, 2018, well after the onset of the May 3rd, 2018 Kilauea volcano eruption here on the Big Island of Hawaii, the USGS started using SUAS vehicles, also known as drones, to monitor and provide situational awareness of the eruption occurring in the Lower East Drift Zone. These drones captured some unbelievable visual displays that I will show you using my new 2018 Kilauea Eruption Video Sandbox. Once the USGS posted the 5.30pm May 9th update, the count had risen and was now at a total of 15 fissures. It would also seem that fissure 15 was the only erupting vent at this time and it was at a minimum as well. This lull in activity appeared as if the eruption might be ending, which was a question people began to ask. Nonetheless, it definitely allowed us to take a deep breath, step back, and relax just for a minute, if not more. The diminished activity also provided an opportunity to explore some areas that had been inaccessible due to the previous eruptive activity. Like in this video clip from May 10th, 2018, we are on the south side of the Kaupili lava flow facing north. Fissure 14 is on the left or west side of the road, while Fissure 3 is on the right or east side. I am not very sure which one this particular Aa lava has erupted from, but at this point, it doesn't alter the substance of any of this very much at all. Skipping ahead just a bit to May 12th, the USGS released a 12 p.m update which showed a new fissure, number 16, had opened and was added to the growing list. Then by 9 a.m. the next day on May 13th, the USGS reported yet another new vent, fissure 17. It was starting to be clear that the short pause was coming to an end. By 4.30 p.m. that evening, there was no question that the lull in the eruption was over. Fissure 17 had outputted a significant amount of lava already, and there was no indication that it was coming to a stop anytime soon. On May 14th at 2.30 p.m., the USGS released the following thermal map, identifying two new fissures, fissures 18 and 19. It also showed that fissure 17 was continuing its eruption, creating a flow front that had begun moving eastward towards the ocean. However, short of the minimum activity at fissure 18 and 19, the rest of the lower east drift zone fissure line appeared quiet. By 6.45 a.m. on the morning of May 15th, another fissure was identified, fissure 20. The eruptive activity from this fissure also seemed to be at a minimum. It also appears that the flow front from fissure 17 has begun to slow, suggesting that the eruptive activity from fissure 17 has started to decrease as well. However, the landscape at the end of Kahokai Street near fissure 5 continued to be dynamic and change by the day. Later in the morning of May 15th, things down at the end of Kahokai started to change. It would also be one of the last days you would see Leilani Avenue at the end of the street. In the distance, you can hear the booms from fissures 17, 18, and 20. The explosive sounds were caused by pockets of methane being ignited that were created by layers of decaying vegetation built up over many decades. Over the next few days, we began to see a shift in the eruptive zones. On the 16th, eruptive activity at fissure 17 was significantly reduced and its flow front stalled. However, there was a slight increase in eruption activity at fissures 16 and 18. By May 18th, fissure 17 had diminished even further. In addition, there had been two more fissures open, fissure 21 in Leilani Estates and Fissure 22 at Lanipuna Gardens. And by this time, Fissure 18 and 20 had become the dominant eruptive locations. 
It's also worth noting that on May 18th at 12.15 p.m., there was a total of seven fissures producing lava. Fissures 4, 15, 17, 18, 20, 21, and 22. Moving ahead to May 19th, based on the 12.15 p.m. report by the USGS, things had become very different in the past 24 hours. The newest fissure, Fissure 22, had joined in with Fissure 20 to become the two dominating erupting vents. Together, they produced two fingers of lava, both traveling over two-thirds of the way to the ocean in less than 24 hours. It was then reported at 11 a.m. May 20th, the flows from fissures 20 and 22 had made ocean entry. May 20th also brought a new fissure vent, fissure 23, in Leilani Estates on Mohala Street and produced only a modest lava eruption. There wasn't much of a change on May 21st. Fissures 20 and 22 were still sending lava down to the ocean. However, by the morning of the next day, May 22nd, there was a significant change in what things looked like. Fissure 20 shut down while Fissure 22 continued to feed the ocean entry. Fissure 6 and 19 resumed and began sending a combined finger of lava towards the ocean. And by that night, Fissure 6 had built its own lava pond around itself, as seen in this video clip from the bottom of Kahukai Street. You can see off in the distance, Fissure 6 to the left at the intersection of Poiki Road and Leilani Avenue. Off center to the right is where Kahukai would continue and intersect with Leilani Avenue. That entire area was now a lava pond being fed mainly by Fissure 6. The crackling sounds are from burning vegetation at the edges of the expanding pond of lava. Let's listen for a bit. Skipping on to the afternoon of May 24th, we find that Fissure 22 is still feeding a stream of lava to the ocean. Surprisingly, it looks like Fissure 19 has shut down and Fissure 13 has reactivated and joined in with Fissure 6 to complete the push of lava to the water. Looking over in Leilani Estates, Fissure 7 and 21 have also undergone a burst of eruptive activity and created an enormous lava pond. Yes, I said enormous lava pond. We are standing at the edge of the massive lava pond created by fissures 21 and 7. The lava fountain for fissure 21 can be seen off to the left in the distance, and fissure 7 is right here in front of us. I must admit, this visual experience was very mind-expanding for me. You can't see it in the video, but there was a small wave motion on the surface. The waves were being generated by the lava fountain action in the middle of the pond. It was just like what you would see in a water pond with a fountain feature in the middle. Once I fully comprehended what I was actually witnessing, the gravity of the visual spectacle became uniquely lucid. I was standing on the edge of a f pond made of lava. What more can I say? As the afternoon of May 25th rolled around, that most awesome lava pond began to breach its banks, and a new flow started to spread out from it, heading northeast towards the intersection of Kahukai and Kaupili streets. Fissures 6 and 13 continued their combined effort in feeding a single finger of lava, and Fissure 22 continued supplying its finger of lava as well, both of which was still making ocean entry. Now, we have finally reached the last day in this first episode. It is May 26th, and by that morning, 
the outflow from the draining lava pond created by fissures 7 and 21 had reached the intersection of Kahukai and Kaupili. This is the wall of A'a lava being driven northeast by fissure 21. This wall of lava is around 15 feet or 4.5 meters high. The clinking and clanking sound this type of lava makes is absolutely otherworldly. It is basically a slow moving avalanche of semi molten basaltic rock, a kind of volcanic glass. In just a moment or two, we will get to see a sizable chunk of lava slump off the face of the lava wall. It makes for an exquisite example of why you should not stand too close. Please be sure to join me in the next episode of revisiting the 2018 Kilauea eruption when we will continue on May 27th and get our first look at the USGS drone video archives. Make sure you don't miss anything by clicking the subscribe button and ringing that bell for notifications. Finally, help me show that YouTube algorithm who's boss. Click the like button and comment below. I love reading your comments and you never know, I might just reply. Mahalo for watching and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening.